Registered Phenomena Code 693 Object Class Gamma Red Hazard Types Sentient Hazard Organic Hazard Grouped Hazard Aggression Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-693-1 instances are as of yet uncontained, and containment is not currently possible with Authority resources. Infected individuals show no signs of anomalous properties or strange behaviors until minutes before an RPC-693-1 emergence incident occurs. Termination of individuals that have reached this state have proven ineffective at stopping transformations once they have begun to take place. Termination of RPC-693-1 instances is achieved by separation of individual bones from the main skeletal structure until the structure is no longer sustainable. Given the nature of RPC-693-1 instances, this is difficult to achieve with firearms, and melee combat with RPC-693-1 instances is ill-advised. Currently, several mobile specialized teams equipped to deal with RPC-693 infestations, collectively referred to as Bonebreakers, operate throughout the continental United States. Every effort must be made to prevent RPC-693 infection from leaving the country, in order to prevent a potential RM-class dominant ship scenario. All remains of RPC-693-1 instances are to be immediately incinerated. Skin contact is forbidden, and any violation of these protocols will result in immediate termination and incineration of the remains. All Authority personnel are instructed to submit themselves to routine scans and submit bone marrow samples on a quasi-regular basis to weed out infection. RPC-693 refers to an unknown species of parasite that, once in an infected host, proceeds to systematically eat away at the subject's bones, excreting waste material that then hardens around the parasite as it begins its asexual reproductive process. Cracks will appear in the sides of the parasite's carapace, and further parasite entities will emerge and repeat the process, until the skeleton's entire structure has been replaced with a parasitical copy. This occurs on a microbial level, and multiplies substantially as the parasites give birth to offspring. Over time, the subject will repeatedly complain of stiff joints and unexplained muscle pain as the RPC-693 process progresses. Eventually, the subject will grow used to the pains and complain about them less and less. No personality change occurs for the entire period of incubation until the RPC-693 emergence event. It is speculated that during the later stages, RPC-693 infected individuals will infect other people with instances of RPC-693. However, how this occurs is still under investigation. It is suspected the parasite excretes larval instances of itself into infected subject sweat glands, and is then transferred to other individuals through skin contact. This would help explain how RPC-693-1 instances infect entire families, and how intact bones of the deceased RPC-693-1 instances show the strongest concentration of parasite carapaces to be in extremities, such as arms and legs with the skull rarely being home to the greatest concentration of parasitical instances. The parasitical reproduction process also creates an enzyme that multiplies bone marrow within the subject's skeleton, altering its chemical composition into an as-of-yet unidentified substance that assumes the normal properties of bone marrow. This substance is regularly excreted out of completely converted bones into joints, reinforcing them and increasing strength at the cost of minor mobility loss. Once total conversion has been achieved, infected individuals will generally begin to act out of character and begin socializing more readily, regardless of previous behavior. It is suspected that these personality changes are influenced by the parasitic skeleton, as it seeks out others of its kind and potentially to spread infection. Infestations of RPC-693 appear to be very territorial, with infected individuals often moving their homes closer together or quitting jobs to maximize time spent with similar individuals. Individuals in an advanced state of infection will often cease all activity altogether, 
other than standing nearby other infected individuals, often in isolated, dark environments, with the less advanced, more active instances of the infected taking care to ensure they remain hidden and unexposed to sunlight. Infected individuals in this state will suffer malnutrition and other deleterious effects due to exposure to the elements or unhealthy environments, but will not expire. Because of this behavior, discovery of an RPC-693 infestation can easily lead to exposure of the anomaly to the public. Infected individuals, even in an advanced state, will not attack ordinary humans, unless the human states an awareness of RPC-693's nature, or makes line-of-sight contact with an exposed portion of an RPC-693-1 skeleton. Parasitic infestations react unanimously to any such exposure. Infected individuals will vocalize shouts and screams and begin tearing away at their flesh to expose their skeletons, often using tools to aid in the process. Some instances of RPC-693-1 have been noted to rapidly grow protrusions of the bone marrow substance to more readily tear through the skin and to be broken off and used as weapons by RPC-693-1 instances. This is known as the RPC-693 Emergence Event. Once an emergence event occurs, an infestation of RPC-693-1 instances will attack any humans or animals in the line of sight and begin to hunt for more humans to attack and to kill, often ignoring serious damage in the process, with little to no regard for self-preservation. It is theorized this is a herd response, with the goal of spreading RPC-693 instances as far from the original infestation point as possible, in order to preserve the species as a whole from predation. Escaped instances of RPC-693-1 will then seek isolated areas, preferably dark and humid, and cease all activity until once again discovered by another human or animal. Addendum. Initial discovery of RPC-693 was made accidentally by MST-Alpha-9 sand snakes, who were doing routine patrols around Nevada during the acquisition of RPC-1. Alpha-9 knows the RPC-693-1 instance lying half-buried in the dirt, its parasitical bones bleached white due to exposure from the elements. Upon seeing the entity, its skull turned to face the team its jaw opening wide in an apparent attempt to make a cry. The entity rose from the ground, waving a long-bladed weapon in its left hand that appeared to have been made out of the entity's straightened right arm. The entity proceeded to attack MST-Alpha-9 and was subdued only when sufficient chunks of the entity's skeleton had been destroyed as to prevent movement. Not long after this encounter, multiple RPC-693 emergence incidents occurred across the continental United States with the only common thread being the proximity of infestations to Authority personnel. Several sites reported individual emergence incidents where personnel infected with RPC-693 were in advanced stages and began attacking their co-workers. It is hypothesized RPC-693 infestations can communicate the existence and nature of threatening entities to other instances across great distances, which is how the Authority knows most if not all infestations are limited to cities within the United States. To date, there has not been a single emergence event outside of the continental United States, but Authority personnel in Canada and Mexico are to remain vigilant for the possibility of a cross-border event occurring. How the parasites were able to identify MST-Alpha-9 as an Authority task force, extrapolate the nature of the Authority's threat to its existence, and then transmit this knowledge to infestations across the span of a continent is unknown as of this time. Presently, the only reliable method of containing an infestation is to first locate an infestation, hire Class Zero personnel, including mercenaries and local hostile environment cleaning companies, to herd the docile advanced instances of the RPC-693-1 to containment. From there, proceeding to apprehend less advanced suspected infected subjects under pretense of bird flu epidemic, after which infestations can then be safely neutralized without risk of exposure. Due to the nature of infected subjects being from any social class, background, race, religion, or sex, 
Prediction models of possible infestation conglomerations is effectively impossible. As such, careful routine inspections of likely infestation locations, such as major cities, must be carried out biannually. Due to the severe nature of RPC-693's threat to humans and the poorly understood nature of infection and contamination, systematic purging of any and all RPC-693 infestations is to be considered a priority. Emergence events have often resulted in high civilian casualty rates, unorthodox deployment of amnestic and misinformation campaigns in order to hastily cover up exposure, and a swell of forcible recruitment to the Authority in both D-Class and other personnel with each event. Most infestations have occurred in the larger metropolises of the United States, but smaller emergence events have taken place in more remote locations, such as rural Kentucky, Nebraska, Texas, and Idaho. The RPC-693-1 instance, initially encountered by the Authority in the Mojave Desert, Nevada, has not been traced to any known infestation in the state, and no record of anything like an emergence event has occurred in Nevada's history. To this date, its origin is unknown. Update. 2018. The only emergence event in Nevada's history occurred after the destruction of the instance. Test Logs Researcher Dr. B Test Exposure to Sulfuric Acid Result RPC-693 infected bones dissolve with no anomalous reactions. Dr. B Potential use of sulfuric acid-based weaponry for in-field neutralization of RPC-693-1 instances warrants investigation. Researcher Dr. B Test Exposure to various chemicals Result RPC-693 infected bones show no reaction to most chemicals and, indeed, seem resistant to more acidic chemicals than human bones would be. Dr. B Interesting. The composition of the parasitoid bone structure must have a specific weakness to sulfuric acid that warrants exploitation. Researcher Dr. B Test Exposure to water Result Caused a dispersal event Bone dissolved into millions of active RPC-693 parasites. Organisms rapidly grew in size and strength, mutating extremities and wings. They then began attacking personnel, ripping away flesh and eating the bones. Throughout experiments, organisms expelled clouds of airborne RPC-693 parasites. Containment breach occurred. Site locked down, pending thorough extermination and cleansing of infected personnel. Further experimentation with RPC-693 has been suspended by Region Director 